correct information uh, is www.tindeck.com forward slash users forward slash MWReveal. And so. the link will appear in the chat room. And the, that's the link. And hopefully it will appear. Well, the Why? link. I mean, when because it, it just goes to right link. Okay. Now, uh, uh, what we like to do is always listen to Spirit. And I said, okay, Jen, um, because we were going to talk about dome li dome downloading. <laughs> Not, not dome, dome lighting? Oh, dome okay. lighting. It's dome lighting. Down, downloading information. But I was also going to say downloading dimensions. Um, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> she picked a card and it said walk away. All right, so she picked the card. Let's find out more about it. What do you say? Leave the unhealthy situation and enjoy the new doors that open as a result. Now, this is huge. When you were taught to walk away, we told you to fix it. But in some cases, whether it's a relationship with a person that you love, or a family member, or a friend, or a job, a school, a career, whatever the relationship may be. Now, this is also can be relationships in your home. Uh, my husband thought, well, he'll never want to leave this home. And after certain circumstances came up, are you able to walk away if you had to? He supposed. That's not the conversation we had a week ago, or yes. two weeks ago. So he's not helpful in this situation. But <laughs> what it was, was, I wish you, you know wish what, you I really wish that I could have just said, I'm done with this and walk away. But there are times when you need to release it so they can just come back to you, or a time to release it so they can just be gone. Now when it comes to unhealthy relationships, the reason why it gets so stagnant, if you don't listen to the whisper and opportunity, Jen, what do I mean by whisper and opportunity? Uh, when those little twangs or nudges pull at you and there's, there's, it's a little flag saying you might want to pay attention, okay, this, you know, this is another situation, gosh, man, this happened to me again. That's a whispering opportunity when you're saying those kinds of things to yourself. Ah, oh, this is ha um, oh, the, I'm oh, yeah, yeah, this is happening again. That's a sign. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of you that is finally understanding that you're reading code, and there's a part of you that don't like it. It could be old patterns that you're doing that you wish you didn't have to do. Um, you don't have to do half of those. Um, it literally can change. And the uh, what I mean by this one example is I thought, oh, I have to be the mother to cook the clean, to take care of the kids, do all this, do all that. And what I, I couldn't break free from the, the restrictions, the confinement that the group conscious said that a woman's place was supposed to be. It had nothing to do with my husband. Humanistic wise, yes, it had everything to do with me, my husband, the kids, the structure. But on a spiritual level, it was, oh my God, can I actually stop and do nothing? Can I change the thing that's driving me crazy before it kills me? And it was the, having the courage to do this. Now, I had no idea I was locked into a fearful state, but I was. And I remember staring going, oh my God, I can't do this, I can't do this, Every, I'll die. And that was my body, not my mind my body had held this group conscious habit for so long that it ended up being in a freeze mode. So my body becomes immobilized and the rest of me, my spirit, my, my mental and emotional wants to change, it knows it wants to change, but it is stuck because it's stuck into that fabric or the code of time. And I finally said, consciously, I have got to stop. Now, I did. I just stopped and I, I didn't cook something at night and I, I didn't do what I normally done and I changed it all up and I knew there was going to be consequences and that was what I was very more scared of because my body has through the DNA structure, through the RNA structure, which is your mother and dad's side, and through the structure of the inherited of all of those lifetimes that they have been on this planet. How Many hist you know history generations have my 
side of the family been on this planet a long time. Probably connected to yours somehow. Probably connected to yours somehow. We don't have a clue. But all I know is that their history of how they experienced what they did in their family dynamics is now playing out. Now, knowing that, it changes a little bit further. I also then have to pick up the woman's um, coding. And then you have the bloodline. I know I have German in me. I know that I have a little bit of Indian. I know that I have a little bit of French. Um, what else? Irish. Um, English. And, and there's probably a possibility a lot more. But you're talking about each and every one of those coatings. Which one is going to vibrate the loudest that's going to hold me into the pattern that I am playing out? Or can I just heal it, change it, and walk away? Well, I didn't have a lot of healing tools at the time, but I just stopped. And I, and, and I, I thought the whole world was going to come crashing down. It, yeah, my world as I know it, but not the world around me. And that's huge that you understand the difference, because the world around you is made up on based on what you know. You're the one that's in control of that reality to some degree. You may not think you are, because it feels like as you look outside, it's attacking you. But in a way, it's about your participation. So I stopped, and I just went on strike. I had to become a cat. I had to get mad. I had to whatever. And it, it, it upset the apple cart that my, it didn't make it easier for me and my husband. My kids had to learn how to have a no whole new mother, but I wasn't going to, I didn't want to die. I didn't want to run away. I didn't want to go to a, a, a loony bin. So I had to do something. And I thought, like I said, the whole world was going to change and come down and come crash around me. And my world as I know it changed. Yes, it sounded bad. Yes, the consequences were there. But then all of a sudden, it became easier. And everything started to sculpt a new way because I didn't die. And now life has to move on. I chronologically have to age. The next day has to come forth. So I crashed my hard drive of how I'm supposed to constantly recreate my reality every day I wake up. The same reality. Um, it is taught that before the age of 20, you have already cemented in everything, opinions, emotions, feelings about who you're going to be for the rest of your life. You stop growing at around age 20 and you start getting old. You start growing old. You just start old. aging. You're mm -hmm. chronologically aging, but with that 20-year-old 20 year old self program. Yeah, and that's not just the 20 year old, it's any time of conception up to the age of 20. Mm -hmm. And so you all then from that moment you'll wake up every day and start creating the same reality, looking for the same relationships, same emotional habits, the same patterns, following through. And just like when Kimberly called in, she knew something was different. And the first caller, knowing you can't follow in the same steps as you did before. Mm -hmm. So you Knowing I crashed the hard drive, meaning my frontal lobe creates the reality, and just said, stop, I am not creating reality that way. I took conscious contact, and I held my frontal lobe prisoner to say, you're not doing this again. Stop. And I forced myself to not to pick up the dishes, not to do this, and to do something different. And it was hard, but at the same time, my whole world got to begin to be sculpted better than what I know it. Because again, I knew I was heading for death's door. So, the, now what's the difference as far as, because I've seen, um, you know, the Facebook memes of, you know, these older couples, you know, we didn't give up on each other. We we fought and we worked it out. Yeah, you know, it's not as, broke, but, don't fix. Or well, we well I was going to say, well, what's the difference with, so then there's the releasement versus what I did, which was I had to physically walk away, which is different than doing a release. Exactly. It's still a release to some degree because you did release your responsibilities of being his wife, being in that household, releasing um, Pete, the dog. You released it because you did a lot of healing cords. Right. And so then the universe just had to set and, okay, you, you're not speaking anymore. You're in the wrong place. And so they had to then pick you and put you somewhere else. Right. I... And the, the meme of those people is that they're still in the old programs. you got to remember, they, if they're, the older couple that's in the, the, the thing, they have those values. Our reality only is based, I don't want to say only, our reality 
is based on the value system that we put into it. So again, our reality is what we define it as. And because of this, there, before World War II, the heart energy wasn't open. And then after World War II, as it's happening, the, the fourth chakra opened up to a whole new level of consciousness that caused people to um, start thinking about, uh, do you ever see that movie? No, I'm not going to remember the name of it. But it's where it's all black and white and everybody starts getting a little bit of color. Pleasantville. Pleasantville, that's it. And that's what's happening at that time was people are starting to get color. And they were thinking more about themselves. They weren't thinking about the structure of how the, the, the family is supposed to be structured about this, how you obey, how you take and go oh, there. Chocolate all over my hands. Where did I get chocolate, Scott? That wasn't me. Uh, anyway, I, I don't know where that came from. Um, <laughs> I'm distracting myself now. Great. Uh, but 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 it's coming alive, and the consciousness are shifting. So way back then, the consciousness was set, and you understand consciousness is your chakras. They are the seals. It is reality. Consciousness comes out of uh, your reality of how you value it and all of this. So the value systems are hooked into your consciousness. So back then it was a structure that said that this is the way they do it. And that means they're probably willing to put up with this fight, this this stuff and all those other things. And I got dirt on my hands too at the same time and I am not going to lick it because I can just imagine some weird ass. Well, I don't know. I don't see anything. This I don't is know what absolutely you're fascinating. So <laughs> magically makes something come out of the air. Okay, so what you were saying is the is the heart opening up, the heart center, um, and how do you and it? What was that one? Think with thinking with your heart or feeling feeling with your brain. Um, <laughs> put it connecting the two and um, my. Theology, Swedenborg's theology, that is the whole point of waking up from your natural self, your spiritual self, awakening within and aligning the heart and the mind. Mm -hmm. That is how a person regenerates. That is how a person is born anew, is by taking a look at their life, um, understanding, you know, doing an inventory kind of thing. And then feeling, you know, using the heart and mind center. That is how the new Jerusalem is de descending. That is how heaven is being created here on earth, is when we actually align those two centers. Yes. And that's what's happening. Um, the first three chakras, or stage of consciousness, was about living on a planetary system. It was about finding who we are in relationship to objects, things, and people. That's the second chakra. And then your third chakra was about yourself. How do you fit into society? But the society was sculpted, and you, um, it was set in stone to some degree. It's like when the, the Spanish conquerors had come over and they said uh, to the Indians and, and whoever they were encountering, oh, you're, do, you're living life all wrong. And so then they taught them how to live a civilized, societal, and what happened is that there's, you know, there's memes all over the internet. And, oh, the Indian says, I wouldn't have known what to do. We didn't have any wars until you came along. And I'm so glad we became civil so we know how to create war. And then they talk about how there they... Was war, right? There was it's, it's, a, it's just going into that. Scale we didn't have the prisons. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have the prisons. We didn't have the right. lawbreakers. Yeah, we didn't have... teaching us how to um, because pillage and... Right, and the th but, but learning to put yourselves in the same sheep box, whereas some cultures there was a designation of what you start growing into your calling of who you are at a very young age, already knowing what place you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it, and you learn to tap into it. And instead you were supposed to tap into the one God, which is nothing wrong with that, but you were supposed to tap into the man-made structure of the one God which then started to create a societal civilization because then people would look at you and go, you're doing it wrong, and then have the way to, to correct you um, or force you into doing what you need to do. And again, that's what part of the body is about. The body holds the habit. Your heart and your mind is going, um, okay, and, but your, your body's going, oh my God, here we go again. 
I mean, when I started to back away, it felt like, am I going to be in the Spanish Inquisition? Am I, am I going to be tortured? Am I going to... But this is a new era. You're learning to open up all the chakras, speaking through the heart, because now the upper level and the lower level, and what do I mean by that, is the first, second, and third chakra, and the fifth, sixth, and seventh chakra are both lit up and are coming through the heart. And we're going to the high heart, we're going to the higher heart. Um, we're starting to expand to the point that give it five minutes and all this information I've given you has just changed for a higher frequency and now more information is coming in. So as we're learning to release, was there something you wanted to read particularly from your book? Uh, the definition of this card, well they're saying it's safe for you to make your desired, desired change. You've been wanting to do so but have hesitated out of fears about what the future holds and how people will, re will react to your decision. This card validates that it really is time to leave. You'll be a ha you'll be happier and healthier as a result. Ask the fairies to smooth the path of your transition and lend the necessary support. The sooner you make this change, the sooner you will experience the bliss that your future has in store for you. So it is important to understand that there is those hard decisions but when you know in your heart and your mind that you need to change something walk away do what you need to do it's going to be the toughest thing but find the courage to just stand up and do it sometimes you're just not as bad as you think um, I all I did was contain and being more fighting but I have then walked away with something more because I got my health back I've got my uh, more of sanity of who I am and we're going to take a break and be back after this subjects about leaving but now we're gonna the next card that came up was ride the wave that sounds funny leave no ride the wave so we'll find out what they're, they're referring to we'll leave what's unhealthy so that you can ride the wave that sounds about right right now success is easy and effortless boy I just love how you transition that very well that's good in the upright position you can be assured that you're entering a time when you can ride the wave of abundance. So, leaving those healthy relationships, unhealthy. and we, if you unhealthy relationships, but if you look at the card of what she was saying, it's how, how did that card go? Can you grab that card again? Maybe. Because the the important parts of what it was was it what? How did it say that? It says, oh, the doors. It's because we were talking about once you release it and you leave it, then that energy you had there to operate because you're the observer you're creating and collapsing time and the energy collapsed that time now your energy's off it you're going to be able to have that energy open up to creating another door and that will then create yourself to have abundance uh, the tide has turned and you can put your surfing skills to the test everything that you know all your talents coupled with your hopes and dreams will carry you forward people and circumstances have come out of the ocean a potential potential blah 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 and possibility to take shape in a wave of spectacular activity know that you are definitely on the right path and that is very good to know because once you're able to change one thing you'll be able to seek abundance in another so what we're going to do we ask Scott to go play and do something because he just needs to unwind in a different way mm -hmm. relationships have been um, for me and Scott, they just keeps growing, but uh, relationships, I keep hearing I need to just say, okay, what, what is relationships going to be like in December? Most of the time it is, if it depends on where you're at, it could be very frustrating. But the energy that had come in, let's find out what relationships are going to be for the rest of December, if we really want to do that. Um, okay. So as we're looking at uh, the, the way the energies are on the planet, it's talking about freeing yourself from certain relationships. Again, I was thinking relationship with people, but they're not saying that. It's the relationship of how you know things. Um, I have wrote a paper, which is now, i got to put it into book form, but it's all about knowing. It is the way you know your ego. Or it's the way you know your lens. It's the way you know your health. It's the way you know things. Um, oftentimes, 
the structure of how men were supposed to treat women because they were treating them like one of the guys and so the harassing and the joking of you know why, why do women have to do this blah 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 ha 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 that's why funny can't, why can't you just take a joke and, and relax now the women are looking and going wait a minute that that's denigrating and the reason why we're looking at it in that fashion is because it is the feminine energy of the way the feminine energy is to take and build the energy and hand it off but when the energy is being handed back off to us it's foreign language to us and in some cases we can actually see where it is the old structure of condemning to some degree keeping you underfoot because we created that structure of what civilization was supposed to be uh, and that structure was kind of rigid um, so they're saying free yourself from how you know things. Any particular hell, any particular thing that caused you to be upset, anything that threw you off your stability or your safety, you then will have a way to react to it. If you react to it in a very, oh my God way, then you are creating an entanglement cord or relationship with that particular thing and you have a choice. You're gonna lose power to it because when you start losing power to it, and, and chronologically time takes, because you've heard people say time heals. Oh, yeah, I like to talk about that uh, one particular website about heartache after you've broken up with somebody or something's happened. So then there's this calculate, uh, alleged calculate, well it is a calculator, but I don't know how they're calculating the information. But it's, you know, how long were you in the relationship? And then it's going to be this many weeks um, recovery for you to just let time take care of it. And there is a set standard of how we statistically behave. I mean, there is a... can come up with a calculator, but again, that locks you into a... I'm really getting sleepy. Um, that locks you into a limitation, and just all you're saying, again, it looks like how you know code, but your inner world is what creates the outer world. So if your values and your knowing is in here, guess what you're going to project out here? And it is the values that creates the reality, but then it's the realities that create the consciousness. So if you are done with the way your life is, then you can change that. Uh, our wonderful Octarine had asked for healing because she had to go to a live wake. And, you know, the person's not dead yet. How do you respond to that? And there was a part of her that was feeling... Um, a little sad, weepy, and other stuff, and it was like, okay, what do I do? And so she used some healing tools, and then this weekend was her, the event, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, she said, she says, oh my God, she said I had a great time, and it's kind of hard to say when you're going to a, a wake funeral, or a wake, whatever they call, but here's the thing, this person, I, she had wrote that, this person came out of nowhere and was so excited to see her, just it, 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 she came up, just hugged her and about knocked her over. And that's the kind of love that you want and friendships you love, you want because when you they hug hard back harder than you give and you're like, whoa, you don't realize how much you're loved, cared for, and respected and or missed. Right. I mean, that still shocks me when I find out how the impact that I'm having on people. You, when you went back home this last time, you hadn't seen some of your cousins or whatever for a very long time. Right. And the way that some of these people responded, you're like, really? You didn't think that you were going to be missed that much. Yeah. They, they were trying to convince her to stay there, but we won. <laughs> 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 right. I, yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's affirming to to know that, you, that we do. We are cared for and that we are having an impact on what would life be like if I weren't around. And I'm very thankful that she has been here because her career is here and it could all change in a heartbeat, but I think she's very feeling very comfortable moving forward and doing what she needs to do because you were measuring your growth the other day. And we're not having you do it so that you can say, I did this and you know, we're asking you to look at it and say, be proud of the fact of how far you've come. And you had been very, oh yeah, yeah, because she knows that someday she's going to have a relationship 
and you know, let's heal all the excess baggage. Or they say, unfold or take the baggage, open it up, and start clearing out the clothes that don't fit anymore. Yeah. And literally just stop taking and carrying all that from the next uh, lifetime or the next group to the next group. Well, I'm, um, you were looking at relationships and that kind of thing, and we were actually talking about this last night during our, you know, fun time jam session. And it was, okay, well, I've been single, you know, it's been a year since I left my marriage now. And, but I'm not, wow, I know, but that I'm not in a relationship. And that I didn't feel like I needed to jump into another relationship. That wasn't the purpose of why I was leaving it. It was walking away from what is unhealthy. We w weren't supposed to be together anymore. And that's hard sometimes, especially when you're married and, you know, cohabitating and, and all of that. But now it's, um, and so then I was struck by um, the comments about when you're 20 years old, you know, you've kind of made those decisions and now you're living them out the rest of your life. And I said, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, what? You know, I've, I've heard this information before, but now it's really, okay, wait a minute. Now I'm looking at it like, oh, what were my relationships like when I was 20 and that kind of thing. And funny enough, it's kind of being reflected in how I am right now. But it's not a bad thing that I'm by myself. I'm comfortable right now being by myself and I don't have that yearning for a relationship. It would be fun, but it's not my primary focus at this time. I, I don't feel like I'm missing out. And some and in the past people have said, Oh, well you're you're just picky. Well <laughs> thank God. Yes, for a very specific <laughs> reason and um and that's okay. I don't, I don't have to buy into the idea of, oh, you should just be with somebody. You need to find somebody. Why, why haven't you found somebody? You know, anybody? We, we've talked about that before, and we watch people just say that, and then the life that they're living is very miserable. And one of the things that the path that you chose in a relationship is a relationship with yourself to grow. Because when you got into a relationship, it was when you weren't really growing. You had studied, you had learned, you'd done this, you functioned, you worked. But then when you started to, real, you were already in the relationship, and then when you started to say, wait a minute, I need a relationship with myself, because you already had a relationship with God, and when you started a relationship with yourself, it really changed the relationship in, in that you had with Him, and it, there's nothing wrong with growth. I mean, I remember having somebody say to me, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't grow. You should go back and you should find what they like and fulfill that. And I'm looking at them like, are you freaking nuts? You, you know, and all I could feel was when I stopped, wasn't growing, I was dying. And I could feel my body going, oh, it's time for us to kick off the planet. And I'm like, no. My, da my dad died at 30-something, I think 36, 33, I don't know. My mother died at 50-something. And I just found out that my grandma lived almost, what, 79, 80? I was very impressed. I go, oh, God, how did grandma get that past that? But it's just like people were dying at a very young age. Do I don't need to follow that pattern. And I says, what would be causing me to die off so young? Because I don't need my body to do that. And it says you're following along the genetic pattern of behavior, the, 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 con the structure and the confinements of what your family life is supposed to be and how you're supposed to behave and you're supposed to have relationships you're supposed to have this and it's like seriously and so when you know are you supposed to be alone you're not she just had a relationship with God and now she's having finding a relationship with her she's actually letting her relationship to her soul grow and when that timing is right she's going to find the other people she's supposed to be with. You're, you're having relationships with uh, friends, your relationships with um, your environment. You know, does this house welcome you? Yeah. Okay, now that's a relationship. And it is very important to have a house like you. I have grew up in a couple places uh, that the house didn't like you. And it's no fun waking and sleeping in a house that doesn't like you. So the first time I actually got into a house that liked me, it was like, oh my God, I feel at home. And I felt received and loved, and it was important that you find a house that welcomes you.
Right, because my other house, I tried to make it welcome me. Yeah. You, but it, it really didn't. Yeah, I mean, it, it was nice, but I also knew that it wasn't for you either, because your house was like, oh, this is done for him, this is done for that. And even though you had your taste, you actually, you know, created things that were representing of him, which was nice of you to do so. But you still... I couldn't have my things. I couldn't have a bookshelf with my... Well, I did have bookshelves with my books, but he kept saying, Oh, God, what are you doing with all those books? We're just going to burn those books. What? And then, oh, we don't... I don't like knickknacks because of, uh, of all this stuff and all this stuff. And it was like he was basically saying all the things that I was thinking about putting out there, we weren't going to have because he didn't like them. Right, so that really wasn't designed for you. His life, this house, was designed that you had to do this. And what was interesting is that all your life you always heard to some degree, do not do what you just did, which was have him control everything. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. And you, you, it wasn't you put when you were growing with um, your mother and your household that you're supposed to be two independent women away from what? away from men and then I ended up <coughs> with him with a man that um, but it was the relationship of, of my sister um, but just with my ex um, playing out in that fashion mm -hmm. and Karen says that her house chose her and, and it's so important uh, the house I'm living in right now what this most strangest thing is, is I just lived right across the road and every time I had to drive by here I would think about this side of the house, the underground part of the house. There's three walls that are made of dirt and then there's a front glass which are all windows. Um, there's fake uh, bricks off to the side just as a wall but this is not a brick house. This is a dirt house. This is, you know, got a cement terra. house. A terra house, yeah. And, um, if they put would have put dirt on top of the roof, then I could have been a hobbit house. But I, you know, I remember driving by, going, "Oh my God, someday I'm going to be able to see that." And I'm thinking, "How would I know this?" And then, "Oh, so I would like to live in that someday." And I'm thinking, "Really? I, no." And so then, ten, you know, years or longer, because this was built like in '84. I graduated in '85. I started, you know, basically driving by it around '86 or '87, and so you know, for a good many years. I kept thinking and knowing that this house somehow was supposed to be with me. Mm -hmm. And so basically I felt like it chose me from a distance. And the first time that I came through was through the back way and I entered a house, it felt so magical. It's like, surprise, here I am! It's not dark and it's not dank and it's not gross and it's not, it's beautiful and light and I'm like, oh! It's amazing how much light there is for being an earth house. Yes, it is. Um, and I and I and I love how things do come to us, as like Arthur says. She wasn't looking to move; it all came to me, and that's always the best way to work with synchronicity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this quick little break, and we'll be right back. We are gonna talk about energies, and surprise! A little while ago, we felt this energy come to the room, and first it hit my husband, and he. Well, no, I actually hit Jen. Both the two sleepy heads uh, were, uh, and you may see a lot of yawning from Jen. On the YouTube. That's awesome. You're welcome. I'm really here. I promise. <laughs> and I, I wasn't uh, hit by it, and then I'm like, okay, honey, Scott, go, go play a Mario Kart or something, you know. And he's like, no, 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 I don't want to abandon it. I said, you're not. Go, go, go. And then I look over, and I hadn't noticed Jen until then. And she's like, ah, I'm already fall asleep. I'm going, oh, oh my God, okay, why don't you leave? Because I think you're affecting Jen. <laughs> Are you picking up Scott? I don't know. And so anyways, he's gone, and then all of a sudden, then, then it started you, to go to my you and I started feeling better. All, and I yeah, said, okay. So basically, you two were not hearing the message. So then I finally said, okay, in my half-asleepness, What's the message? <laughs> I said, what's going on? And I heard a spirit guide was here trying to tell us. There's a, there's a listener out there that was or is feeling. And the first thing it says is that it grieves for a family they've never had. And then the second one was afraid of people. Oops. Not that one. Afraid to reveal inner secrets for, for fear of rejection or approval. And I'm like, okay, so now that I've said it, is there any other information I'm supposed to say? Yes. Uh, okay, so they're saying yes. 
I want you to help them. So if you're listening and you know it's you, then we're going to do a little reading for you. Because I'm, I mean, we're all over the place, can't think. And now I can that you barely have, keep my eyes open. Yeah. And so now I'm just going to. So based on the fact that you're grieving for a family you never had and that there's, you're afraid of revealing secrets because you're going to be rejected, we're just going to dive deeper, and I can't even talk, dive deeper into uh, the cards at hand. So I'm going to toss one up. Jen's going to toss one up. And then I'm going to toss another one up. And she will. And then we will depict this is a story that they have been so willfully pushing us to do for a while. And finally agreed. So the first card that come up, now remember if you have the Enchanted Map uh, by Colette Baron Reed, we're so going to number, deck. that's an awesome deck, number 31, Dry Desert. The first part of it says, deep, dig deep for inspiration and truth. Now is the time to become resilient and adaptable. So now in the reverse position, the subject of your inquiry is barren and can't give you anything right now. So this person that I am connecting with, I feel like you want to do something, but you're just not, it's not the right timing. No matter how beautiful and, and seductive the shimmering glow of the mirage, this is an illusion. When the dry desert card is reversed, it is a warning not to be hypnotized into thinking you will achieve your desires. Can you look up jaw and ear because it's so intense right now and I don't think you want them. No! Oh my gosh, I have enough ear issues. Please, no, 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 no. Okay, so the ear and the jaw because I can feel like them about decisions, but... <laughs> Sorry, people. <laughs> She's physically feeling it now because I don't feel it. When the dry desert card is reversed, it is a warning not to be hypnotized into thinking you'll achieve your desires. This well is empty. Consider the gift here, though. Now know that while this is not the right place, person, or circumstance for you at the moment, it means that something much better, more fulfilling, and life sustaining is coming. Celebrate the warning and be grateful. So it's just waiting. So basically, you're sitting in the waiting room, and now we're going to define more about what the waiting room is. And so, so the, up the so jaw. the jaw. Oh my god! Because I got the left side is like intense. Okay, I'll look that up. But the jaw itself. The whole pattern arises from there having been an associate parent position in a dysfunctional fam family where no matter what they did to make things work and function in the same manner, it didn't go anywhere. And then the left jaw problem, deprivation rage. There is a good deal of resentment about unmet needs along with fierce determination to get their needs met come what may. Their experience was that if they didn't do this, they would literally be allowed to waste away. And that's probably why it feels like you would like to have a family, because you're feeling deprived by it. What else you got? What about tense jaw muscles? Tense jaw muscles? Yeah, go ahead and read that. Stuffing it. They are over self-controlled <laughs> and holding back, and they are not telling it like it is. There's a lot of contained and restrained rage about deprivation and oppression. They are swallowing stuff. They are suppressing unexpressed strong feelings. It comes from their finding out that any form of self-expression only made the situation far worse. Okay, look up left ear, or at least ear. Um, and, and, and usually your teeth are in there, and it's about making those decisions. So if you can find teeth, too, it would be left side. Um, and a lot of times it's that you're not able to make your commitments or other people aren't making the commitments. Uh, the next card that came up was that you're not able to have partnerships. And so you're tired of being so, uh, alone, but you don't know who and what to forgive because it doesn't make a lot of sense. But yet you can say, yeah, I know who to forgive, forgive and who I shouldn't forgive. But there's a lot of stories roaming around. So, Jen. So is it left inner ear structure yeah. problem? Self-deluding, they are reality defining, redefining in a manner that is detrimental to their functioning. They are bound to beliefs learned early in life in their family. Okay, bound to beliefs learned in life. When you're bound to that, you know, I learned that I had to be on a good behavior, I get my ass beat. That's a lesson that was learned as a kid, but guess what? 
maybe you're not supposed to be such good behavior where everybody steps all over you and you're supposed to learn to speak up. I was told not to copycat and so I miss almost missed an opportunity of a lifetime to grow because my learned behavior was, oh, I don't copycat, I don't mimic. And so I couldn't almost ask and say, hey, would I, can I come along and do this class with your daughter? Um, that almost didn't come out of my mouth. So sometimes some learned behaviors need to be unlearned. What else do you get? Mm, ear problems in general? Um, let's see, do we want the ear problem? Left ear. Anything for left ear? That's what I read was the left ear, left ear canal? Yes, go there. A left ear, a left ear problems. I don't want to know about me. They have a fear of and or hypersensitivity to their personal characteristics or inner inputs. The and only problem with that is, is that you don't want to know about you. You don't want to know about what the person don't like. I've had people walk up to me and tell me what they don't like. They say, oh, I don't like you. But what they're really telling me is what they don't like and why all of a sudden do I have to stop this behavior because they don't like it? They're not even in my life. Half the time they aren't. So I changing myself for them so they'll notice is not the thing to do. It's like the time that when my husband says, I got up at 3 a.m., I had gotten a piece of toast, and I left the butter out, and my husband was complaining for whatever reason that I had left the butter out. Well, I had made sure that butter was put away, and he never knew it that I had ever gotten it out. So when a year or two later I'd gotten the butter out and I forgot to put it away, he was griping again. You see, you always leave it out. And I'm thinking, you don't count for all the times that I put it away. Well, how am I supposed to? I never know you use it. And I'm going, then why is it that you're pointing out this time? So again, it is about how you don't change yourself for others. Go ahead. Left ear canal. There I go again. They're finding that they are becoming detrimental to their own best interests. What's that mean? So they're finding that they're becoming detrimental to their own best interests of late. So whatever they're doing, they're, they've got self-defeating behaviors, okay. and so they're not. So they're becoming detrimental. So they can't even be a family unto themselves. Right. So it, it's it's like the the reading that we did for the person recently about habits that the habits that they currently have aren't aren't serving anymore. That's true. And when they need to go, they need to go. So now I got to find out: Is there anything else that we're supposed to tell this person? how to heal it. Oh, okay. So now let me just see if there's any particular thing. Um, uh, this is not the same person and it could be, but this is somebody else that has something similar. They said that there's something about their, ha their house. And all I can say is that you, whoever has got a house that feels like the energies are off, the polarities of the, of the house are off. Yes, the, the house can have polarities, meaning the magnetic energies can be shifted. And it feels like uh, somebody is disturbing your peace. And all I can say is um, you can take just regular magnets. You can buy them at, um, you know, a Radio Shack and stuff like this. And literally find out which side wants to be up. And you can put them in the corners of your house. And you can put them in certain places. And just kind of help rebalance the polarity by using magnets. Now, getting back to the person I was referring to, I have to figure out again where is it they what they want me to tell. And I didn't feel like it was that structure, but it might be. So, if you were going to use a healing tool, okay. So, meridian tapping, no hope therapy, um, bringing in wonderful experiences. You can use the golden lasso. And the golden lasso is very simple. You decide what you want, you lasso it out, and bring it to you. And the whole instructions about if you feel like you're denigrating, going, well, I ain't going to work, you can tap that out by using meridian tapping. Just keep doing that. Heal anything that stops you from actually bringing it in. Don't just go, oh, I'm bringing it in. Yep, 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 it's good. No, we don't want that type of energy of emotion involved because that's just a, a Band-Aid. We yes, want to... We, we, before with all this uh, garden metaphor, you have to weed things out, you have to till the ground, you have to prepare the soil before you can put anything new, before it's going to have anything useful come out of it. you got to get rid of the, the dross, you got to get rid of the, the stuff, create closure, you got to prepare for, re do the work to prepare so that you get the good stuff. Exactly. And then, to help prepare for that, thought management. I mean, it is got all the instructions on there, it's simple enough. You got voices in your head. It sounds it's your voice. 
But have you ever thought about, oh, God, I, I, I should have done that better? And is that really you, or is that coming from somebody that said you should have done better? Um, how else? Uh, I mean, just think of um, teachers from the past, influences. Oh, family, yeah, that's right. The, friends. the things that, that haunt you, because I had a college professor. I couldn't understand what this guy wanted for the life of me. I tried writing the reports and everything as possible, and then when I finally said, that's it, I'm going to write this as a report as two people talking. Now, I had already handed a couple papers in, and so I had no idea he was even referring to me, but in his mind, he had a fresh experience that, hey, I just handed in, I know what the hell I'm talking about, but which paper is he handing back, and how, who in the heck would I know that I would even get an A when all I kept getting is E's, because I couldn't do it the way he wanted it. And so when he is yelling and screaming at the people in the room, it's like, who is he talking to? Who is he talking about? And so we're all looking and saying, who is he looking, you know. And it was me. And I'm like, what's he talking about? And because I couldn't understand and I had to play catch up to what he was doing, he just assumed that I was already guilty for cheating. And I'm like, oh. And then when I finally got my paper back, I'm going, no, I worked really hard on this. I thought this was, would have been an interesting concept about how two people talk, but at the same time, he had me so shocked because he was so mean that I couldn't answer, and any time I've learned in the past when people have ever yelled at me, the best thing to do is not, never speak. It just makes it worse for them. Right, the self-correction just goes right in. Oh, no peep. And, and so my training of how I was taught to just be quiet, as well as I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of fighting, um, literally didn't help, help my case any. But the thought process was, as I was trying to write my paper when I started five years ago, was, oh, you're just going to do it wrong. Somebody's going to accuse you of treating. Oh, you might be a fraud. Blah, 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 blah. So I made sure I didn't read a lot of books, but I, I took and I absorbed my own um, pioneeristic skills of meditation and doing this and creating a format um, that people knew that this was legit. I wasn't going to be accused of stuff that wasn't true. And yet, it's, you know, so these people, when they get stuck, so thought management is simply, you, the instructions is putting them in a rectangle, and you have a few other things to do it to kick them out. Um, how else? Now, as far as the, the feeling alone, what was the two, two cards you just took away? What was it called? Partnership and forgiveness. And what do you need to do when you start to heal a little bit further is, when you start to denigrate yourself, when you start doing that self-talk about things that, you know, oh God, I got so many secrets, notice that there's shame and there's guilt and all you have to do is notice that you have a palm, okay, and you put your finger in the middle of the palm. Which hand? It doesn't matter at this point. You can put it in either palm. Some say, well, I don't have hands. That's fine. You have an imagination. You know what a finger is and you know what a palm is. And if you can just imagine doing that, even if you have a stub, you can put your finger and imagine that your finger is on the stub in the middle of your palm and you're touching the stub. Either way, it is the way you can heal. You can do this. And just start putting your hand on your forehead, okay? You can put one finger there and one hand on your forehead and literally just start thinking about the, the way that you have been shamed and guilted into believing that you have a dirty secret, that you can't have family, and that you can't do this, and you can't do that, just heal it away. It's amazing how two hours can go by fast. Just remember, you can always check us out on YouTube. That's um, youtube.com forward slash, is it Medicine Women Reveal, the whole yes. word? And then remember, if you would like to listen to any of our shows, you go to tindeck.com forward slash users forward slash mwreveal. We have all of our shows there. And what else do we have? We have um, a show coming up on Friday from 5 to 7, and we will... Oh, yes? We got affirmation. Um, Somebody said us something, yes? Yeah. And, uh, awesome. So that's we're just the saying, person. We're just saying you're welcome um, to whatever, you know, however we're helping you. So Oh, well, thank you for um, making a confirmation. pay it forward. You know, just um, mm -hmm. we're here for you. Yep. Stay tuned and, and then come back next uh, we've we've got, Friday. We've got uh, we've got we're members here on Sepia, so you oh, can us too. you can find us. We're the mm -hmm. medicine women. Really. Okay, so we gotta go. Uh, okay, we're down to the last few seconds. Yep, down to the wire. Okay. And see you, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.